Today we'll build a garden house from scratch in only 4 days. Enjoy! Good morning fellow woodworkers! In the next few episodes I'm going to show you how to build this ugly piece of garbage right here. I know, it's not perfect, doesn't have windows yet, but this is for another episode. And I hope you are going to watch all the episodes. Link to all the episodes down there in the description in the woodworking playlist. And now I'm wishing you a lot of fun and I hope you can build along for yourself. Round about last July I wanted to build a small man hut from scratch to test out some of my new tools. These are the approximate plans I created to get a better feel for all dimensions before getting started with the real thing. I was still a complete woodworking beginner when I built this project, but it still turned out pretty fine. The only bigger thing I ever created before that, my only real project was the pet bunny hutch, link to the video down there in the description. So it was a pretty wild experience for me, but still a lot of fun. And now let's get to business. In Germany you can build a housing of up to 10 square meters in area without official permission. So I first dug out a 250 by 4 meter rectangular space. Next it was off to placing the foundation. I wanted it to sit perfectly rectangular in the hole, so I got creative and used a bit of simple maths. In order to get a 90 degree angle in the corner, I constructed a 90 degree triangle with two side lengths of 2.5 meters and 4 meters. By Pythagoras, the hypotenuse must be 4.72 meters long. So I took a non-elastic string of length 11.22 meters, fixed it in the corners and the triangle that will be traced out will yield a perfect 90 degree angle. It's that easy. Pfft, you won't use the mathematics you learn in school later in life, yeah, you bet you are going to use it somehow. Next, I placed a simple point concrete foundation consisting of 18 stones embedded in a mix of concrete and gravel. First shovel up a dirt heap and cover the top with gravel. Then mix the concrete. And last but not least, place the stone, making sure that everything is square and level. And then I covered the heap with a bit more dirt to prevent the concrete from hardening too quickly in the high temperatures. Now for the wood. I first cut out the window frames from spruce stock using my miter saw, mitering all ends in the process too. The profiled wood that we use for the walls will sit in grooves at all times, so to embed the frames into the housing, I use my router table to cut the grooves too before gluing everything together. Next comes the base that will sit in the foundation. The outer perimeter will once again be embedded with grooves in which the walls will sit. And that's my mom's sanding. The inner bars will be fixed to the outer frame with simple half and cross lap joints held in place with screws. Pretty easy procedure, using a small circular saw in combination with a Japanese hand saw and a chisel. So proud of me wife, she did it really well. Then we laid it all out to see if all fits well and if the joints had some room for inevitable wood movement during the seasons. And then we transported the frame over to my property, where we placed it in its respective position. And it all fit really well, just as planned. 
Next, it was about time to screw the frame together. Always making sure that we were dead accurate with all measurements, keeping the expected width of 2.5 meters. And here yeah, I quickly checked if the profiled wood would even fit into our grooves. Yeah, pretty early, I know. Now enjoy this time lapse of me screwing wooden plates for frame alignment with the foundation into place while my little slaves lift the frame up and down. Next we fixed the four main pillars, which also had grooves routed into them, in place. On the inside with steel angles and screws. And on the outside with flat steel metal connectors and some more screws. By the same means, we installed a few more, but thinner pillars to thoroughly support the walls. Next, we took the door to where it's supposed to sit later and installed the other supporting pillar, encasing the door in the process. And last but not least, we cut a few profile wood planks to size to check if they would all fit nicely into the frame. And they sure as hell did. And that already wraps up day one. Don't forget to tune in for the next episode and subscribe if you did enjoy what you have seen today. See ya!